<laughs> well, let's go through your grips. Um, you can start wherever you want, take them in whatever order you want to. All right, let's see what we got. Um, so we'll go four seam. Let's see if we, the glare let's in the yeah, window. Yeah, I can see it. We can see, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you kind of tuck a let's little bit. Let's see if bit. we can turn so that the uh, the glare is not not getting us here. All right, yeah, so that's the four seam right there. Is there anything um, special you're thinking about on your four seam? Um, not really. Um, more so just like trying to drive it down. Um, where I get in trouble is like my hand, kind of my wrist, it feels like that. I don't know if it actually does, but like I'm really trying to like drive the ball down and stay on top of it. And you feel like that helps you get a more true spin? Is that what the- Yeah, that's the, the crazy part about the fastball was that um, when I was younger, I always felt like I was throwing harder than I actually was. I was like, man, that, that's not as it's coming out pretty good. Like, I'm like, oh, I bet you this was like when I was like 13 or 14. I was like, oh, I bet you I was throwing like 85 today. And then it was like 79 or something like that. And I was like, eh, not as hard as I thought it was going to be. So, but like, as I got older and realized like that there was numbers to it, I'm like, okay, my, the ball spins really well. So it probably seems like it has more life. And I'm like, all right, well, that, okay, that makes sense now. Why well, like, it always felt like the ball was coming out harder than it was or you know you know stuff like that so for me it was never like something i really learned how to to you know like spin the ball properly or anything that was just something that i naturally did i guess yeah that's cool because you know it when you're playing catch with somebody like oh boy that ball you know that ball seems like it gets on you real quick now we have the numbers and the all the the analytics behind it that you can tell why that feels that way but you always knew it like you knew you were yeah. the kid that 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 it always seemed like you were throwing hard I would just, yeah, it would just seem like it was like, it just, it just would like, and not, I don't even know that it would, jumping is necessarily like, but it just, I don't know. It was different. I, there were some guys I played catch with though, that like, they might not have the best, you know, track man numbers in terms of, you know, whatever teams are looking for, but the ball, like there's a second and third gear to the, to the balls when you're playing catch with them. Those are usually the guys that I'm like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm done. Playing. I'm not playing catch with this guy anymore. Sorry, somebody, somebody else. You know, bullpen catcher or somebody. Somebody catch with this dude. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to. Wait, yeah, go. we got all right. So we got four seam. Um, next we got change up. I'm always turning the ball around. That's like my, <laughs> I don't know. Um, change ups right here. So kind of not a circle. Kind of. You're not a circle. Let's see if we can get this in here. Yeah, yeah. not really a circle. Um not like much grip pressure either um for me it's kind of i feel it here like in the thumb let me see yep so i feel it like here in the thumb like right in this point right here and then on the inside of my um like index knuckle type of deal and so for me those are probably like the two pressure points i guess and it's not really much pressure anyway it's just kind of like all right those are the two parts where I'm attached to the ball that I know I have to pronate with those kind of turn the, I, I look at it as like, you're kind of like turning the radio, like to, you're turning the knob on a radio or any type of knob, whatever it is. And then just at the end, it's just kind of like a flick almost. Yeah. So yeah. So you are intentionally that. Yeah. You're intentionally pronating to get, to get good faith too. Yeah. And that was like, that's another one that this, this, I grew up with a two seam and a change up and the, the change up, I think more from, throwing a three finger two seam when I was younger because my hands weren't yeah. big enough. And yep. then just kind of as my hands got bigger, um, I remember just like kind of holding the ball, like similar how to do it now, but like just kind of light in my hands and the ring finger or the, yeah, or like pinky finger and my thumb were kind of just like touching at the bottom. And I was just playing catch and I was like, oh, let me see what this. And it kind of had that like little fading action to it. And I was like, oh, okay, great, whatever. And then um, it just kind of turned into my changeup. It was never like a, hey, learn, you know, try and learn how to throw this pitch or whatever. It was just kind of stumbled upon throwing a changeup. And that's pretty natural to you then. Because you were, I mean, it's not a big change from how you were ever throwing it, which is probably why it's a, su a successful pitch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those pitches that, like, I had it when I was younger, got to high school, you know, um, Velo kind of jumped a little bit. So didn't necessarily need it as much. Got to college, same thing, really wasn't using it. It wasn't like in my repertoire. Got to Miami and they were, you know, really emphasizing change-ups. 
And I was like, that's, that's my best pitch. Like that's a pitch I grew up on. And they were like, kind of like, yeah, okay. Like sure. It's your best pitch. Like whatever. I was like, no, no I'm serious. Like just give me a little bit of time to like kind of learn it or, you know, get the feel back for it. And it took me a while and it was so frustrating. Cause I'm like, I could used to be able to roll out of bed and throw this pitch. Like, and then same thing last year, it was like, I never had to like learn or like learn the intricacies of it that allow it to be successful. So it's one of those pitches that's like super frustrating and being like, all right, like some days I know I could just throw it. And then some days I'm like, I don't even know where it went. So yeah, it's, it's a frustrating pitch. There's no doubt about that. It's like the best pitch that, um, you know, Scherzer refers to it as a mid range jumper. It's one of those things that it's a total feel pitch, but when you get it, it's, it's, I mean, it's the best pitch in baseball. It's base, best pitch it's, to watch and it's the most effective. Yes. It's, it's, uh, at the time when, when Miami had, had, you know, started to stress it, I kind of was like, I, I, every, you know, everything was about trying to spin the ball, you know, heaters up, trying to spin the ball down, um, sliders, you know, slutters, whatever off of it, curveballs. You just want to work in the word slutter, didn't you? Well, I, I think I kind of, <laughs> I saw that glass now was calling it a slutter and I was like, I kind of been calling it my, my, the hybrid cutter a slutter for a little while but yeah. you know he, he could take credit for it once <laughs> but yeah i saw that um yeah so it was just kind of the, the change up was i didn't realize how effective it was and they're like all right well it's going to get guys off your heater and then for me i was just thinking all right it was just going to be a, a a speed differential i didn't know it was going to be like a move like a movement pitch for me now like you know since i hadn't thrown in a while and then I shifted away from the speed differential and was like, all right, let's just make this a movement pitch and yeah, go from there. And I, I'm, I'm totally on, on the belief that it's the hardest pitch to learn if you didn't throw it growing up. Like, I think it's the number one pitch that kids should learn growing up because I think you can be taught how to spin a baseball, but like having the feel for a changeup is just like, it's, it's different. The other thing. So most, and this is something I've talked about over and over again. It's the guys that, the guys usually they can spin a slider, can't pronate a changeup, and kind of vice versa. Um, it's really tough uh, for for guys that are really good pronators to do the reverse. The really talent, like if you can do both, you know, it's it's fantastic. But it seems like there's most people learn one or the other, and and then you maybe forget how to learn when you're older. It's tougher, I think. No, I definitely I could definitely see that. Like me trying to when I was trying to learn like a traditional slider, I guess you could say at Carolina, my freshman year, I couldn't figure it out. I was like, I don't get it. It doesn't make it like this, the, the slider arm motion, this doesn't make any sense to me. Um, then, you know, I happened to stumble upon, I guess what everyone would call a slider, but I was like, I have to tell myself it's a cutter because I, I can't get too long and sweepy with it. Um, yep. So that's kind of where the, the cutter came into play. Um, but there's definitely like, I feel like you could do one or the, like one or the other, and then the elite of the elite prior, just like, all right, I could, you know, spin whatever and, and pronate whatever, and, you know, manipulate the ball. Are you more focused? So you mentioned it's a movement pitch, you know, like Grinky, it's a movement pitch. Cause sometimes his changeup is faster than his fastball. Is that something that you're, yeah. you're more focused? You like the movement more than you're it's successful. If you're getting the right movement versus getting the change in Vila. Yeah, for me, because I it's the the change in velo is, is tough for me. Because then you start thinking about getting the change in velo. That's right. And you're you know you're trying to do, you might be trying to slow things down or whatever it might be. It's like all right, if I can just throw it, even if it's six miles an hour less than my fastball and it has the fade and but it doesn't hover, I'm gonna that's more often not gonna get weak contact or swing and misses. Um, the, yeah, the the I toyed around with. Uh, like a 14 change up a little while when I was trying to, you know, figure out what was going on and, and try and take some speed off of it. And for me, I was just kind of telegraphing it too much and it just really wasn't working out. Yeah. I think it, so to me, that's the way I always taught a change up too, is I think, especially when you're younger kids, if they're throwing a change up, they slow everything down. They think it, I, number one, it doesn't process right in their head. They think they're trying, I'm trying to fool somebody by making it slower and me like kids will yeah. always, yeah. But if you can tell them it's a movement thing, then they're more apt to pronate right, and they'll they'll say, "Oh, did you see the way that one that one moved?" And they fall in love with a changeup. It's just a yep. trick in teaching it a little bit, um, but it also yeah. can be successful. No, I agree. And like, there's that. Like, I think uh, Maddox said that he was quoted in saying that like when he would try and take speed off, he would curl his toes. That was his right. like yeah. thing to kind of take speed off. So like, if you could be like, "Hey, 
don't think about doing anything else different. Just, you know, curl your toes or, you know, have a, you know, whatever it might be like, you know, so yeah, it's, but I think that's where, you know, kids will get in trouble of being like, all right, well, I'm going to throw it slower. And that ball usually ends up over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that essentially what it comes out to be. Yeah. Yep. Um, exactly. But all right. So we had, we did four seam, we did change up. Uh, so this is the, this is the slaughter. I guess you could, I, it was originally so you a, torque it a little bit in your hand, a little bit, um, a little it's, bit. It yeah. Like yeah. It. So like, yeah. So it's not, I kind of, where I, where I would do it first was, um, this glare is really killing it. So I would, I would try and split the, like split the label in half kind mm -hmm. of right here was where I first started, um, learning it. That was with my index finger of just like trying to split it in half. Um, and then as time's gone on, just like learned how to manipulate the ball a little bit different, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's, um, this index finger is kind of, let's see what we got here. Uh -huh. Like it's, it's almost like on a point just because I don't want that to get too involved. I want it to feel like it's coming off the, you know, the middle finger and then same thing. The middle finger is just kind of like on a point too. um, having the pressure in there and then having the pressure, you know, kind of in my thumb like kind of just like the edge right here and just hooking the seam a little bit and depending on the shape or however i want to do it like if i want to do like a shorter one um like a more of a true cutter i, I guess you could say i'll just kind of cut it off at the top and then depending on how much depth you know i'll, I'll try and turn it over a little bit and, and get that that middle nail out in front and just try and add some depth to it yeah yeah so it, but it, it basically just started from here and I would take my, I would try and take my middle finger from the catcher's like left shoulder, like shoulder pad to his right, like knee pad was kind of the, the path that I wanted it to go on. Um, and then as I moved from the first base side of the rubber to the third base, I had to change the whole, like the whole type of where this starts and stuff like that. So that was that was probably the biggest adjustment pitch when I moved from the first base, first base side to the third base side of trying to figure out where I had to start it now. And you know, what I had to tell myself. Gotcha. Um, how do they work together? Like, how do you feel like uh, they work together? Do you have a plan, master plan, like for your arsenal, you're saying, yeah, you know, some guys will say, I want to throw everything down the middle and they'll just break in all different ways. Um, you tend to live on the edges of the zone a lot too. Is there a, like, did you have a plan in developing this or you just thought a, a slutter was a nice? Person? No, no, I, I, I learned, I learned it by accident, actually. So I'm playing catch in summer ball. Uh, I was in Chatham my, my freshman summer and I'm playing catch with uh, this guy, Paul Cavelli, who played at um, Franklin and Pierce. I think it's a, a division two up like up in the Northeast. And he's throwing me this, this, he's throwing like a true cutter, I think is what he's throwing at the time. And from, you know, 60 feet away or 65 feet, whatever we are, I'm like, hey, how are you throwing that? So he's showing it to me. And I obviously, I saw the wrong grit. I was like, all right, cool. So I just like grabbed the ball, threw it. I was like, hmm, that's moving pretty. That, that moves different than anything else that I got. And so I'm like, all right, let's just keep working with this. So for like two weeks, I'm playing it, you know, throwing it in catch play and, and on, on the mound and stuff like that. And then come to find out he's like hey how you throwing and i was like right here like how you showed it to me and i was like he said that's not even close to what i said it was like <laughs> it's really different so i literally learned to pitch by accident thinking that's what he showed me um and then that's kind of like wh what turned into the the cutter slutter hybrid whatever you want to call it i i mean i can call it a slutter through the season if you want if that makes you feel good i will do it i mean yeah i, I, I mean that's cool pretty much it. what it is okay i, I got I, it yeah I, this this the slaughter works well because everyone because so i'm like all right i'm throwing the cutter and i know it's not a cutter but like i said to you like i have to convince i would have to yeah. convince myself that it was now i kind of i'm like all right i i can i can call it i can't call it a slider just because like i'm either just calling it a slutter with less or more depth like that's pretty much what it is i'm like all right it's a slutter because everyone's like oh it's your slider and i'm like eh, it's more of a let's just call it a slutter I, you know, people don't understand this and this, you're making a really, really good point. Um, I think I talked to McCullers who said he has to think of his, as his two seamer as a sinker or else he won't get the right shape. And it's, it's sometimes what you call the pitch because then you're visualizing it. Then you 
have it go the way that you want it to go. There's a lot in the name of a pitch that everybody's like, well, you know, why does he call it a sinker? It's really a, a two seamer. Um, I'm like, because that's what makes him successful. I'm going to go with whatever the pitcher wants it to be called. Number one. Yeah. I want to, I want to reinforce the good thing in your head, but two, I think that's a really important point that you just said. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think there's, there is, there's absolutely merit to, to having to trick yourself. If it's not, you know, that type of pitch of being like, for me, it was the, I, I needed to throw the ball, the, the, the mantra or the saying of people like let just throw it like a fastball it's just fastball and at the end you do that that like is the most I, I can't do that it doesn't <laughs> work for me like zero percent like when people would do that when i was younger, like just throw it like a fastball and then like right at the end just kind of you know turn it over or do whatever and in my head i'm thinking fastball 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 and then i'm getting twisted like uh, it's not the proper way at least i thought you know how to learn a pitch that you know with movement like a, a breaking ball so for me it was like all right the cutter is the same thing like a fastball. It's like same idea of you're just throwing a, a, a tilted fastball a little bit with, with some depth. And well, let's just go with that. And then that was tricking me into throwing it harder um, and just kind of not getting too, uh, I guess, dominant with my middle finger of kind of like having this feeling of going like this right. type of deal, as opposed to like getting over the ball um, and feeling like, you know, same thing with my heater. Yep. Yeah, that, that, that yeah, makes so sense. Yeah. Um, all right. So next we got, we'll go with the, knuckle curve. we'll go, we'll go knuckle curve, spike knuckle curve right here. Um, this Did is, you always throw so, that too? Um, so no, not really. This was at first. So my brother used to throw the Mike Mussina, like double knuckle curve yeah. from like way back in the day. And his was, his was pretty good. Um, and that was the thing growing up. They're like, oh, your brother always had a good curveball. Like you used to learn to throw that. So I, that, that was me growing up, like trying to figure out, like trying to throw one of these. And it was not good. It was by, by no means was it anything that should have been used in any <laughs> little league game. Um, but I was, I was using it. Um, and so that it started out with that and then it moved to a spike probably like when I was like 13. No, nah, I wouldn't say that. I was probably a little bit older than that. I'd say probably 14 or 15. I was spiking it here kind of up the horseshoe mm -hmm. um and that really just wasn't working for me either i just couldn't get a i i just couldn't get a, an idea like the consistent spin um so i'm like all right well I, something's got to click here so I, i'm gonna so i so i went from here my finger was like a little bit closer and the it was kind of popping out on me i wasn't getting like this has been and finally we ended on um we had a guy carolina ben moss who had like a pretty good curveball and i'm like what do you how do you throw yours like what, what do you He's like, I hook the 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 seam right here, you know, kind of dig my nail in it a little bit, and then that should prevent it from popping out on you. And that's kind of since I was 18, 17, 18, that's kind of the, the grip I've been working with and and trying to perfect it over time. How are you releasing it? Pretty much just like straight up, like trying to just get straight over the top, like as close to 12, 6 as I possibly can get. Um, I don't I don't think from the chart, I think I have like a little bit more sweep than 12.6. Like it's not as true 12.6, but for me, it's just like, there's a, there's a point in the, when it's going really well, I can feel my hand get to like right at that point And then right at the end, it just kind of goes. I, where I was, you know, growing up and having trouble with it, I was throwing it early, trying to like make it spin and stuff like that. Um, throwing it really high, like really high in my release point, trying to get that action. And for me, it's kind of over the last, year or so i guess you know before the start of like last year was like all right it's not necessarily as high it's just more like out front it's out front and then that feeling of like okay now you can go and then spin the ball so more like a you're thinking heater 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 and then you're you're spin are you are you intentionally uh no nah, i wouldn't say there's an intentional type of it's more just like my hand is just cocked and i guess just, you could say like there's really nothing there's no type of spin or anything like that um it's just kind of like right at the end just you know just finish kind of the pitch them. type of yeah just like pretty much just get your your middle finger um you know just just get your middle finger over the ball like i it's it's tough for me to think about um you know a lot of guys like they'll talk about getting your thumb up or whatever that might be for me it's just like kind of let the grip do the thing and then just just rip it from there for me the biggest thing is is 
when I get my delivery gets too out of whack, like I, I think of like a figure skater, like how they want to spin faster. Like when I can keep everything in, you know, kind of like, like in a roller coaster when they say, keep your hands and feet inside in the vehicle. Like when I can do that, that'll allow me to, to get out front and just allow the grip to do, you know, what it's supposed to do and, and create that action. Gotcha. So, Makes sense. Yeah. And then finally we got the, I, I started, I was trying to add a couple pitches this year, like always just, you know, add a couple weapons, um, you know, don't really want to stay too stagnant. So the one I've been kind of working on lately is, is a true cutter, um, kind of add some, some ride to it. Um, I think I saw a video that glass now was doing and he talked about how he has that his muscles are atrophied in his hand. Yeah. Um, and I was like, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. Like how that works out for him. And so I just started toying around with like, I thought you were gonna say you gave yourself um, carpal tunnel and then uh <laughs> yeah actually yeah. I, yeah I was just I, I didn't know how you would do that I playing video games like 24 yeah. hours a day and was like yeah all right this carpal tunnel should really help me this out. is um, awesome <laughs> yeah uh no but like his his thing of uh you know his hands were spread out and also like kind of the feeling like he's throwing a football was yeah. at first when I was like first trying to pick it up I thought it was was pretty cool and I was messing with it and it, it really wasn't super repeatable for me but it was it was nice to get the idea of like what it should feel like um and then I just you know I'm a, I'm a big like my middle finger is like super dominant in pretty much all of my pitches so for me it was kind of just um nice. hook the uh -huh. I'm hooking this right here and then this is kind of spread out and off the seam um just so it's not getting super um dominant. I don't know if I've ever seen and, and that causing... before. That's cool. Yeah, and I don't know. And it's it's I, I don't know that I'm gonna it's like it's still a work in progress, but it's something like I'm obsessed with cutters. Like that's my like Mariano, Kenley, like those guys like last night throw like the cutters, like it's it's crazy. So yeah, for me it's just kind of feel almost feel like this uh all the the action is in my index finger of like I feel like I'm just kind of at the end, like this is, is coming down here and just letting the middle finger just kind of rest and, you know, hang out. Gotcha. So I'm going to have to know when that happens because I'm not sure any pitch tracker is going to be able to tell me and I'm probably not going to be able to notice it. So if I call it a slaughter by mistake, you can correct me and say, it was I'll have to, I'll have to send you a message and say, Hey, that was, yeah. I don't know. Ho hopefully they will be, hopefully they will be distinguishable. Um, hopefully it'll be a little bit more true. It's going to be a tighter, uh, tighter cutter type thing. Yeah. Like tighter, What's the velo like on more it? lateral. Uh, I'd say in bullpens, it's probably been 87, 88, hmm. somewhere in there. So yeah. So in the game, probably, yeah. I, I, bullpens probably 85, 86. So in the game, I'd say it's probably gonna be 87, 88, kind of similar to like my, how i was cutting off the slaughter and just kind of making that a, a cutter um but i think this will just be like a little bit more true and kind of um hopefully be a little bit harder to pick up in terms of like the spin being a little bit cleaner and stuff like that so do you think so what is like next level for